Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I am finally doing another increasingly retro 2012 Transformers Generations review. This is Voyager Grimlock, the flagship standalone toy release for Fall of Cybertron, alongside the flagship multi-part toy release that was Bruticus. Grimlock's got the look of his video game model with shapes and surface details pulled right off the digital screen. Now, the proportions are a bit of a different story. As Grimlock's legs are really thin, his shoulder pauldrons aren't puffy enough, and if you look at him from behind, there are a whole lot of panels that straight up aren't there. The backs of his legs are dire, and the back of his torso tries and fails to cover all the holes with the backpack made out of his Dino Mode's upper body. There's a decent amount of paintwork picking out various details on Grimlock's body, but his base plastic colors of silver and gold are both strangely faded and desaturated. There's no gunmetal strength, no shimmering, emboldening gold, but there is a bunch of translucent red plastic that brings a little bit of life to his torso and optics, the latter of which light pipe up incredibly well. The head sculpt is also pretty good, but like much of his body, it is also a little too thin. Grimlock comes with a sword and shield, which are honestly a bit more of a giant machete and buckler. Regardless, they use a delicious translucent plastic for their meaty energy parts, and can also be mounted on Grimlock's forearms or shoulders. Finally, if you pull a switch attached to a highly conspicuous space T-Rex head on Grimlock's back, the translucent plastic in his chest lights up. Not uniformly, but there's enough wiggle and give in the backpack to let you move the illumination up and down to your taste. Make that Lightning Strike Coalition insignia shine, loud and proud! There's a ball-jointed neck here, but looking left and right is most of what it does, because when he's... Well, he can nod a little bit, but he can't tilt a ton. Tilt just a touch. Oh, you know what? That's, that's just enough for Grimlock. Alright, I take it back. It's a good ball-jointed head. His shoulders can go forwards. There's a little bit of minor detenting in uh, this box here that the joint is contained within. Uh, there's a normal bicep swivel, a normal somewhat detented elbow that lets you go 90 degrees. It's pretty cool. There's a wrist swivel even, so you can waggle his sword. Outward shoulder movement is weird. There's a couple joints in here, and it's all exposed in a real ugly way. His shoulder can, like, do this. And uh, if you don't care about game accuracy, often, eventually, everyone with this toy who kept it went like, You know what? I'll just do that, or this, so I stop seeing this skeletal stuff in here. If you want to do outward shoulder motion, it's detented, goes out that far, and after a while, like after a couple years, this has become nice. When this toy first came out, these were ridiculously tight on like one side, I forgot which. You can see like the, the mechanism in there, it's all ugly and just weird, man. But uh, that's about it for his sh uh, shoulder motion. He has no waist joint. But, like, he has no plastic back there either, so I don't blame him. A1602, yeah, right, baby. Uh, there's just maybe a little mushroom peg deal could have been done in there, but there's, there's, like, no surface to operate in. His hips are weird. They, uh, they can go out about that far, right? And there's a thigh swivel. Then there's a ratcheted hip joint, but it's on a V cut. And I don't like it. Uh, the thigh swivel lets you adjust, so it's not like it limits articulation, but it always feels weird and kind of unpleasant. Then there's a ratcheted knee joint, which is here. Not down there, but up here. That's important. So you can bend his knee about 90 degrees. But, like, his legs never really look good when they're posing, and then he's got, like, it's just a stick and there's a foot. It's at sculpted at uh, enough of an angle that it's made for, like, it's an ace stance. It doesn't really work too well for much else. And then the, the tail keeps coming unclipped in there, so you have this weird, like, waggle joint. And for a while, like, you know, first people who got this toy, it's like, what did... I just want to pose his leg! What? Which part is the knee? Even when it's all locked together, there's this much waggle in there. And it, uh, it just makes it... It's not like he's unposable. It's just, he, from the waist down, he's kind of unpleasant. His shoulders, for a while, were kind of unpleasant. Uh, he's not very fun to pose. He just always feels like he's about to break in half. No, he hasn't. He's quite durable. He's lasted all these years. He could take a couple spells like that. But, uh... This doesn't feel good, man. Doesn't feel very nice at all. And then I keep just struggling to get him back into, like... This one pose I found for him where he's standing, and I kind of like it. Like, his legs look kind of okay there. And I sort of want to leave him like that forever. <laughs> Ugh! <sighs>
This is a simple transformation, and honestly, it's kind of fun. But damn if you can't see it struggling, STRUGGLING to follow the blueprint of the video game's conversion scheme, which admittedly followed a lot of the blueprint of the G1 Grimlock Toys conversion scheme. It's alright, up until the part where the legs single-handedly become the tail, when that mass really could have been used on the main center mass of Grimlock's dino mode. And goddamn if this space T-Rex isn't a troubled alternate form. He looks okay from the front, and kind of from the top front, but as you creep around the side, you see how ridiculously huge his tail is. And if you start to lower your field of view, he literally has no underbelly. There's just nothing there. And given how overly large his tail is compared to the rest of his body, it is frustrating to see all that mass just sitting there when it could have made a real difference to Grimlock's underside. The one thing this mode does that I legitimately adore is its LED function. The switch also opens the T-Rex mouth, and the head just blazes up. The eyes, the insignia, the central panel line, and the inside of the mouth all get a ton of crimson light. And it looks awesome every time I pull back on the activation lever. Oh yeah, the robot shoulder peg holes allow for some decent looking weapon storage, at least in the context of weapons attached to robot dinosaurs, so you don't have to leave them lying on the table or anything. This guy ain't too poseable. He's got ball-jointed little T-Rex arms. Many people over the years reported these would come off easily. Mine don't, and I don't even remember if I did any treatment on them. His uh, jaw can move, but it's all spring-loaded and operated by the lovely light-up lever, so I don't know if this really counts. Uh, he's got knees, uh, although the size of his tail, well, you know, it still works, because now he's, you know, in 80s dino mode where he's dragging his tail. The neck joint for the transformation, you can get a decent bit of variation there for this kind of posture and then uh, the knees will let you go into the more classic modern uh, I'm a run at you T-Rex posture and that's about it the tabs that connect these parts up into this piece lock it basically so you can't move it at all however if you cheat you can untab it and use that weird uh, robot shoulder joint and now you've got some hip motion it's even kind of decent it's just a little bit you know, unlocked. So uh, this this can be useful for some kind of poses, like if he's running or rearing up. But generally, the most stable and clean-looking version of this T-Rex mode, because this also means that you know we'll just exacerbate that problem by having like armature sticking out there. The cleanest way for him to look is to just tab it in and uh, you know just treat him as though he has like two major poses, and then his arms can waggle. This is a pretty bad toy that has aged pretty terribly with every revolution around the sun since its inception, and yet, I still have a soft spot for it even in 2015. This was a release that tried to bring both a larger robot mode size and electronic features to the Voyager price point while simultaneously having to be produced on the doorstep of freshly risen oil costs that hampered Transformers toy budgets across the board that year. And as he stubbornly ballooned in visual volume and filled his dino head with blazing LED light, his plastic was stretched like toffee, and every single surface not visible from a full-on frontal view began to evaporate. Grimlock's toy was hamstrung by untimely happenstance. He was Matt Teacher's most gleeful reveal for Fall of Cybertron, and suffered almost as untimely a fate as the hope for a third Transformers game from High Moon Studios. This is not a good toy, but it tried so very hard to be. I love it for what it desperately wanted to be, and absolutely could not in 2012. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and the ideal of video game Grimlock manifesting as a toy did not end here. Officially, yes, but unofficially, some people did not give up.